Okay, I'm going to be starting a new project today. Um, a while back I had done a multiplexer uh, design for some fire equipment. Um, and if you don't know what a multiplexer is, basically that's where you actually have uh, uh, you know, a data channel in a, in a vehicle um, that is controlling all of the devices in it. So traditional wiring, you would actually go, go from the battery, run all the way to a switch, out of the switch, to the device that you want to turn on and off and you know generally you go to chassis ground um, most modern vehicles today uh, are, are utilizing multiplexing um, you know they're starting to even use it in like the recreational vehicles as well what it allows you to do especially if you want to do uh, neat things like convenience features turning things on, on automatically um, Necess without necessarily having to give user input um, basically you're starting to see this everywhere uh, and a lot of new parts that are coming out are actually uh, uh, making it really inexpensive almost some of the parts are actually cheaper than relays uh, I have a uh, project I want to do with my uh, Razor 1000S uh, one of the things I've had issues with is A uh, the LED light, if you basically turn everything on the razor and you're using it at idle, you can actually deplete the voltage down on the battery. Uh, the stator, I think, is rated on the razor at around 500 watts, give or take. If you're consuming more than 500 watts idling for an extended amount of time, uh, you can actually drain the battery down to the point to where if you turn the unit off, uh, you wouldn't be able to get it cranked back. Or worse, it could actually. Uh, you know, go down low enough to where the ignition system and, and a fuel injection would work and it would actually shut down. Uh, so one of the things that I want to incorporate in this uh, really quick thing, I want to take a very large scale multiplexer that I designed and shrink that down probably to, I'm thinking maybe a two or four output uh, with four input. Uh, one of the neat things that it'll do for my particular application is I have, I've added a winch and I've added a LED bar. Um, I want to add a couple other accessories, uh, you know, radio, rock lights, uh, probably a reverse light. Everything that's in the razor, with the exception of the actual accessory uh, 12 volt, which is what turns on and off uh, the things like a few seconds after you turn off the razor, um, everything is pretty much, you know, hard switch the old way of doing things. None of it's really multiplexed. Uh, the winch and the LED bar I plan on immediately multiplexing and I want to have the ability of adding on. Um, most multiplexing systems in automobiles uh, are CAN bus. Uh, one of the projects, I, I, I never shot a video of it, but one of the projects that I did on my Razor is actually intercepted the CAN bus on the diagnostic port and the neat information that you can get from that uh, diagnostic port is am I in reverse which you know that that's going to yield very well for uh, backup lots and another thing is how fast am I going and the end goal would be to have a system uh, that would a I could add turn lots without any issue uh, make the you know, lots blink uh, I may even make the, uh, the tail lots actually do a stutter uh, which you know provides additional visibility uh, if somebody's behind me. Um, I do know of one uh, team that actually races uh, that's using one of my multiplexers, the big large multiplexers, you know, to run the race lots and, and set the pace on the race lots and uh, all of their strobes and the, the whole nine yards. But basically, what I want to do is take that existing design and shrink it down. And another thing on that design. Uh, is I know at some point um, I'm probably going to want to have a little bit more GUI than just switches. Uh, I may want LEDs, uh, I may want a lot of inputs, uh, and I may actually end up doing like you know, touchscreen interface or something like that. Um, for this particular design, uh, I've kind of gotten started on it. I'm going to be doing it all the boards in CAD. I've already gotten some of the uh, components uh, for testing. I'll just kind of go over those with you real quick. Um, so this this is actually from uh, ST. 
and these are basically one of their evaluation boards for their um, one of their high side switches now this one is really small and these things are really deceiving if you look at if you're looking at a data sheet basically what you're looking at doing is something that has a very low on the high side uh, a very long low uh, turn on resistance because any resistance that you have when this turns on you're gonna have to dissipate that heat somewhere uh, so if you're looking at really high current devices um, I'm looking at most of these outputs are going to be less than 10 amps, uh, maybe 15 amps. Uh, and on the higher output items, I will likely either parallel these or I'll actually step up. They have several parts. Uh, they have one that's in an, an octopack that um, will handle a, a, quite a bit of current. Um, but these basically are just for, you know, uh, prototyping. I'll be prototyping this this is something I've used on past projects this is just a small STM8 um, this is not the automotive style STM8 this is this has a normal UART on it and for my bus I don't plan on actually using uh, CAN bus and there's a couple of reasons for that uh, one, CAN bus is kind of designed to send uh, relatively short messages. RS-485, on the other hand, can send whatever you want to send. And basically what I'll be doing is I'll be polling these uh, devices, and I'm also going to make a version of this that if you don't have it connected to 45, it does a standard, uh, a standard thing. And that'll be basically, you know, given the set of inputs that are on each board, it will affect the outputs. Now, if it detects that it's part of a, a part of my network, um, in other words, I have more than one board connected together, it's going to go off of, uh, you know, a, a centralized control. Uh, so initially, I'm going to start out with this and at least two of this style. I'll probably go with the... Uh, the power pad package. Uh, this, I think, on the development board is just an uh, SOIC. Um, and that should get me the LED control, and I want to be able to control the, the actual winch turn on solenoid, not the full power of the winch, uh, but the part that actually turns on, you know, my winch switch so I can go backwards or forwards. Um, right now, I it, the existing one that's in the Razor 1000, my 800, I did something really similar to this uh, with one of the big MUX boards. Now keep in mind that was a very large module that's this big. Uh, my goal is to shoot for something very, very small, smaller than this board, more than likely. Um, and I've already got a board laid out and it should be on its way. It'll be here sometime, uh, you know, around Christmas time or so. Um, but I've already got the stencils and all the parts to actually construct the board. Uh, and I'll actually uh, prototype more of the code. I already have pretty much the standalone version. Uh, the thing I'm interested at this point is when I want to actually network these. Uh, and then how I want to do the, uh, the input control. Uh, typically what I've done in the past, uh, you know, you take a, a fire apparatus or something like that. Uh, you'll actually get a membrane switch panel made that's you know IP67 rated. Uh, it only takes two processor pins to scan that entire membrane. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do this on this unless I do one of those membranes and I, and I don't plan on doing that. I'm going to try to use the, the switches that I have in place. Uh, a couple of things I want to do that are kind of special and kind of neat is if this detects a problem. One, th one thing that this does that a relay won't do uh, other than not make any noise is this can actually tell me how much current that I'm using so I can basically set a baseline and if something goes awry if nothing else I can at least flash the indicator uh, that's on the switch and what that means is your backlit switch could actually be flashed or pulsed and that's if I don't do something like a touch screen or, or some other thing um, one of the things that, we, that, uh, that I did on that, that fire apparatus mux was there's actually in the central module it had a you know a really small OLED, OLED screen. Uh, what that OLED did was it, it basically you could scroll through and program it. 
Um, it was a really simple, you know, PLC type thing uh, with really simple ladder logic. But it would tell you what the states and things like that were. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over this real quick. Uh, and I'm going to try to, this will be several videos. And I'm, you know, I may skip between projects just waiting on, you know, boards or parts. For this small version, this two, two uh, channel version, I already have the parts. I'm waiting on boards. I already have the stencils. And I'll show you most of that here real quick.